My name is Karen Cooper. I'm the Executive Director of the Modern Quilt Guild, and I am thrilled that the National Quilt Museum has chosen to exhibit the work of our members in the MQG Retrospective. The MQG is a worldwide organization with more than 15,000 members around the globe. Our mission is to support and encourage the growth of modern quilting through art, education, and community. People can choose to be members of our organization in one of two ways. People can join as individual members where they access all of our content virtually from wherever they are in the world. We have webinars, we have patterns, we have tutorials and articles and a quarterly publication that is all included as part of a membership fee. Members can also join with a local MQG in their community. You can learn more about joining our organization by visiting our website at themodernquiltguild.com. On the left side is a menu for the join and it can tell you a little bit about find a guild or how to join as an individual member and a little bit about our benefits. You can also on our website learn more about our annual quilting conference and quilt show called QuiltCon. It occurs every February in various locations around the United States. In February of 2022 it will be in Phoenix and in February of 2023 we'll be in Atlanta. On the right side of our website is a QuiltCon menu and you can learn all about our organization. Thank you very much. One of the questions we often hear is what is modern quilting or what is a modern quilt? And there are many, many things that define a modern quilt. And one thing that we actually say is sometimes it's hard to say exactly what a modern quilt is, but you'll certainly know it when you see it. Modern quilts often use bold, solid colors, extensive negative space, maybe a more minimalist design, improvisational piecing. Um, the, the use of text in quilting, a text quilt is, or words are pieced into the quilt and not applique on, but more pieced in is becoming more and more common. Um, and one of my personal favorites that you see a lot is a modern traditionalist look, where maybe someone takes a very traditional or well-known quilt pattern, such as a log cabin or a, a star quilt, and basically modifies it or does something completely out of the ordinary or or more modern with it. Hi, I'm Laura Hartrick. Um, I'm here at the National Quilt Museum for my first visit, which is wonderful. And um, I'm visiting my quilt. This is a good excuse to come to the museum for the first time. Um, my quilt is part of the MQG retrospective exhibit here. And I've been quilting for about 11 or 12 years, I think. Um, started off just making baby quilts for friends. And once I joined the Chicago Modern Quilt Guild, I really just took off and um, went full steam ahead from there. So I'm a proud member of the Modern Quilt Guild. Um, I love my local guild. I love the National Guild. 
I love being part of their shows and um, every year I'm I'm trying to make something that that's worthy of being exhibited in their amazing shows so yeah thank you for having me today My name is Elizabeth Ray and I'm here at the National Quilt Museum with my quilt vote. Um, I made this quilt in October of 2020, right before the election, and I was just thinking about um, spreading the message of voting and how everyone should go out and vote at that time. Um, a lot of my designs are with geometric shapes and lines. I'm a proud member of the Modern Quilt Guild and I've been quilting about six or seven years.
Hi, my name is Melody Baker. I live in Lenexa, Kansas. And I'm here today with my quilt. It's titled Color Bars. Um, it's uh, created off of an image. And um, I think my biggest uh, tackle with it is um, how do you get something from a five by seven looking image to, you know, a big quilt. So basically, I did figure out what I wanted to do with the width of the bars. And I basically cut my fabrics and the colors into those strips, just long strips. And then I pretty much laid this whole thing out on the floor of our sitting room. And so I, I laugh when I see it because I remember crawling around and stepping on it and just, you know, laying it all out. Uh, it was much easier than working off of a design wall. But um, then I would get my diagonals or get the shape or the direction I wanted it to go. And then, you know, you have kind of sections. A big section here, a section here, this little group, and this big section up here. But I took those sections and made those and then put the whole thing together and made the full uh, quilt complete. Um, a lot of straight line stitching if you're not into curves and everything. This, this is the one. But even the grid that I used for the quilting, it's, it's just a, like about a one and a half inch square grid over the whole thing. Um, just keep it simple and plain. And um, I don't know, it just kind of makes me laugh because I remember I was just kind of walking all over it. And I mean, literally on the floor. So all of you who are making your quilts on the floor, pin basing and all that, you can do it. <laughs> but um, I love the bright colors. And it's just really clean. And I think it's pretty simple looking, but I kind of think that it works in this modern age. So that's my quilt. And I'm glad it's here. Thank you to the National Quilt Museum for having the show. Great. <laughs>
actually also made a pattern out of it. So if you are curious about the quilt and want to try it yourself, I have a PDF download on my website. Um, so it's Ty Flanagan. You can follow me on Instagram or find me online. So thanks for learning more about my quilt. My name's Elizabeth Ray and I'm here at the National Quilt Museum with my quilt Rectangles Become Squares. Um, I like to make a lot of designs that are geometric with shapes and lines. Um, this quilt I did design in EQ8 first and so I kind of laid out the shapes and the colors and then actually constructed it very quickly in about in a matter of a week before the quilt con deadline. So I got that quilt made and submitted it and it was shown at quilt con in February of 2020 and I'm happy to see it here again and be at the museum. My name is Bob Bosher, and this is my quilt, White on White. Um, it actually started, the idea for it, um, one of my friends and I were sewing one night and we were talking about um, how she had run out of the piecing thread she was using and so she just used another color. And um, at the end it kind of showed through the seams on the front and how she actually liked that. Um, and we were talking about it and that really kind of inspired me to be more intentional with that and to use a bright, uh, neon piecing thread with the white fabric uh, and kind of play with what that looks like and why we hide that as quilters and what happens when we maybe focus on that. Um, playing with transparency and the hidden parts of sewing um, and yeah it ends up being kind of a, um, in this quilt at least, it ends up being a little bit of a subtle uh, feature um, and uh, it's been fun playing with it and I've uh, continued to play with that uh, transparency and that uh, piecing with different colors and it's been a lot of fun. Hi, I'm Kelly Spell and I'm here with my quilt, Felicitas Pickle, at the National Quilt Museum in Paducah. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about how this came about. Um, anybody who has been to Quilt Week in Paducah is probably familiar with the work of Mary Kerr. She has many quilts that are exhibited during uh, Quilt Weeks in the uh, past several years. And my guild, the Chattanooga Modern Quilt Guild in Tennessee, invited her to come and talk to us about her work, which often incorporates vintage textiles or quilt tops or quilt blocks in, uh, into modern quilts. 
So we had her come and give us a talk and we decided when she left that it would be really fun to do what we called a cut it up challenge where we swapped works in progress. Um, some of us brought complete tops that we just weren't interested in turning into quilts. Some people brought blocks. Some people brought UFOs, things that they had started that they weren't interested in finishing and we swapped them. And the idea was to take that thing that you got and cut it up and incorporate it into a new piece. So my guildmate Ann Hurley gave me one, I think maybe it was two 12 inch blocks that were stack and whack blocks. And they are here, this white and the prints here, all in these spikes of the pickle. And because it was a stack and whack block, I was thinking kaleidoscope and that original idea of what those are intended to be. And so I just started thinking about radiating things or moving things. And I guess the original, the ending result doesn't look really anything like a kaleidoscope. But um, when I finished, I was very happy to realize that it looked a lot like a pickle dish, which is a traditional quilt block that I really love. I've never mm -hmm. made any, but I always have um, admired them. And so it was felicitous that it ended up looking like that. And so that is the story of my pickle quilt. Um, hi, I'm Stephanie Rule, and I'm a member of the Denver, Denver Metro Modern Quilt Guild. Um, and a friend of mine, Christine, who's in the background here, and Kelly, further in the background, drove all the way here to see our quilts at the um, uh, exhibit at the uh, National Quilt Museum in Paducah. Um, although these two quilts are both mine and they're both slightly different from each other, they do have something in common. They're made a couple years apart and start with a story about me calling a person whose mother was a quilter. So I constructed this quilt first. Um, it's called Embers, named by my daughter because when she looked at it finished, she said it looks like it glows in the middle. Um, and it literally does glow. So the museum's given permission for people to take a flash photograph of this quilt. I finished the entire quilt top and then came across a lovely older man who worked for the 3M company and at the time they were making yardage of retro reflective material which is made of glass nanoparticles. And I called him out of the blue and he said, well how much do you want? And I said, well just a little. And he goes, well we sell it on the thousand yard bolt. And I'm like, oh, oh okay, well could I just have a yard? And so he, he's like, what are you doing it, you know, doing with it? And I said, well, I'm a quilter. And he goes, don't say anymore. My wife's a quilter. My mother was a quilter. And he goes, I'm pretty sure we have a yard here that's like damaged. And so he was able to ship me a yard of the fabric. It can't be folded. So it came on a big, large roll. And I went out and picked out parts of my improv quilt and inserted the retro reflective material, which can be seen in gray, but when you take a picture, it flashes back at you white. So then it sort of began me on my quest of finding other material made with the same properties. And a few years later, I was able to come across some thread made with retro reflective material, and I incorporated it into this quilt, which is named after the modern artist Clifford Still. Uh, I come from Denver, Colorado, and we have the Clifford Still Museum in our city, and it's one of my favorite places to go. And I'm much inspired by the textural use of paint. Uh, he mixes and blends and moves it in different depths. And so I tried to sort of recreate in the mind a modern piece with depth to it. So I used various weights and colors, heavily quilted this piece, um, and then ran in a couple areas the retro reflective thread. So when you take a picture of it, it flashes back as well. Um, both these quilts have appeared in other places, this on a uh, calendar and postcard, um, and this in a book. So it's been fun to have them travel around and then end 
that's sort of at the, you know, the macro thing. So thank you so much.